I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Good morning, and again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope you're having a great one, and that you've been able to get some quality time in with those that you love. Perhaps you've gotten some much-needed rest as well. And I hope the snow has been enjoyable and not too much of a problem. You know, when it started snowing on Christmas Eve, I was sort of playing Santa Claus out delivering some presents in between our church services. And you know, it was so beautiful driving around in it and exciting. And I was thinking how great it was that we're going to have a white Christmas. You know, I've only had a few of those, like two other ones of those in my life, so I was thrilled. And I remember praying, thank you, God, a white Christmas is so wonderful. Man, don't we all need that? What a wonderful gift. Thank you, God. And then I got a text from my wife, our power is out. (laughs) (laughs) Our power is out on Christmas Eve. And you know what I thought right away? Of course it is. (laughs) 2020 strikes again, right? 2020. Well, this is the last Sunday of 2020. Did you realize that? And I know everyone's glad to be done with this year, but for today and for the rest of this year, I want you to hold on to something. I want you to hold on to Christmas, because it is still Christmas. And that is a reason to celebrate. We should all still be celebrating Christmas. God has given God's self to us. God has given God's self to us. You know, this is actually one of my favorite Sundays of the year, the first Sunday after Christmas, and it's because of our gospel that you just heard. We read it every year after Christmas Day. And I just love the prologue of the Gospel of John. I love how it parallels with the opening of Genesis within the beginning. I love the imagery. I love the philosophy and the poetry. It's the complete package. It even has my favorite verse of the entire Bible. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Which can also be translated, the Word became flesh and dwells within us. The Word became flesh and dwells within us. Now, I know that's not always easy to see. (laughs) It's not easy always to believe that the Word became flesh and lives in us. Sometimes I have trouble believing that about me or about other people because we can all be difficult. We can all be difficult. I get that. I mean, we've had our boys home all last week, and we have another week to come. And that's all awesome, and I know I'm so blessed, but we're not really all used to being all together all the time. Like we are during the holidays, you're together all the time, because we're usually so busy with work and school and sports. And as great as it is to be with everyone, sometimes it gets a little intense around the house. It can get a little intense, right? Now, I don't know if it was my wife or it was my boys, but we have a new saying in our house this year. Because when the tempers flare or a voice is raised, you will hear someone, usually in some other room of the house, sing out in a sarcastic way, Happy Holidays! Happy Holidays! It's like we're singing it through gritted teeth, right? Happy Holidays! And usually that works. We start laughing and remembering everything is okay. Everything's going to be okay. But again, sometimes it's not so easy to see that, that the Word has become flesh and dwells within us. But that is the gospel. I think we just have to slow down with those that are around us. You know, slow down in order to see that God does, that God really does dwell within us. So the past couple of weekends, I've experienced this whole God dwelling within us through what I think is going to be a new hobby of mine because I just really enjoy it so much. With football and soccer season being over for our boys, I've had Saturday mornings free. And a buddy of mine, Gil, who sits over there in St. John, he's taken me and my two older boys hunting. We've gone deer hunting a couple of weekends. Now, this is all very new to me. I had never gone hunting before in my life until last year. I mean, 
when I was my children's age, I was living in Memphis, Tennessee, <laughs> in a very urban neighborhood in Memphis. So we didn't do a lot of hunting, <laughs> unless it was like hunting for barbecue ribs at Rendezvous or something. But I've got hunting now, I've gone hunting now for a couple of weeks, a couple of times, and it just works for me. I mean, we go out there on this beautiful piece of property, we climb into a tree stand, and I'm with one of my boys in a stand, and Gil's with my other son in a different stand, and we just sit there and wait, trying to be as quiet as we can be, but being aware, being observant, being present. Now, some of you might think that sounds awfully boring, and there was a time that I would have agreed with you, but I found that it's not boring. It's beautiful. You are outside in God's beautiful creation, being fully present to the moment. I mean, one morning there was a good amount of fog, and then the smell of the forest, man, it just smells like life. And yes, there is the very real thrill of shooting at a buck, looking forward to all that venison meat. But the last time we went, we didn't even see a single deer, nothing, not one. And guess what? I still loved it. <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else in the world. But you know what it really makes it so wonderful is that I'm sitting there for several hours with one of my sons, not really talking much because you really do have to be quiet, but still sharing time together, sharing moments together. I find myself experiencing a profound and reverent silence for all of God's creation, the beautiful mystery of all life, and best of all, it's me and my son experiencing all of this together, me sharing myself with him and him sharing himself with me. And I think to myself, God really does love this world. <laughs> God really does love this world. And God really does love my son, and God loves him so much. He loves him so much that God is really dwelling in him. And God is really dwelling in me. And with that, I'm then able to see God dwelling in everyone, in every single person. And I just get overwhelmed with how awesome this God is. That God gives God's self to us over and over and over. It's so worth celebrating. So yes, the year 2020 is almost over, <laughs> but Christmas just keeps going. God continues to dwell in us. So take some time this week during this most holy season and experience God's presence within yourself, through others, throughout all of creation. Merry Christmas. <laughs>